Um, I'm extremely, extremely thrilled to have uh, Swamini Ji be um, uh, giving us the concluding talk. Uh, Swamini Ji, Namaskaram. Thank you very much, uh, Sonal. And uh, congratulations on what I would believe has been a very successful conference uh, for all the participants as well as uh, the presenters, I'm guessing. Yes. Right? Because, you know, you are sharing the knowledge of the Rishis and the I see that the Rishis and the Devatas bless all of you. Uh, who are already practicing astrologers and uh, perhaps there are some budding ones and then there is always scope to improve and allow oneself to be a channel for whatever the person needs to hear from us. So with those prayers Thank you. for the successful completion yes. of this uh, conference, I'm hoping that uh, everyone has had adequate learning and may the process of assimilation continue. So my Thank you. Namaskar Swamini Ji. We start with the prayer from the Upanishad, Radhar Samaveda. And we also invoke the grace of Adi Shankaracharya and the entire parampara. Om Sada Shiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Kuru Paramparam Om Apyayantu Mamangani Vapranas Chakshushrotramatho Balamindriyani Chasarvadi Sarvam Brahma Upanishadam, Maham Brahma Nirakuryat, Mama Brahma Nirakarot, Anirakaradam Astva Nirakaradam Me Astu, Tadatmani Nirate Ya Upanishad Sudharma Ste Mai Santo, Te Mai Santo, Om Shanti 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 Hi. So the prayer really meant that may my limbs, my speech, my prana, ears, eyes, and my senses, may they all be strong. For what? All that is revealed by the Upanishads is the limitless, that is Brahman. And so may I always be awake to this. May I not deny or reject Brahman because of the next new shiny object? And may there be grace ever flowing in my life. May all the dharmas that are uh, mentioned by the Upanishads, may they shine on me because I am the one that is intent on knowing the Atma. And may they shine in me, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So for this closing talk, I thought I would take a tiny section from Chandogya Upanishad. And this is the seventh chapter, also popularly called Bhuma Vidya. So Bhuma referring to the limitless, the knowledge of the limitless. And it starts with a very beautiful story. So Rishi Narada is a, of course, as you all would know, Deva Rishi, learned scholar. And as it so happens, he approaches Sanat Kumara. So son of Brahmaji who was taught by Dakshina Murti himself. Both of them are Brahma Kumaras. And Narada, as we know, has a multi-entry visa across all lokas. He can go anywhere, anytime. So he lands up in front of Sanat Kumara Rishi and he says, Adhihi Bhagavaha, please teach me. I know all the mantras, but I have heard that Atmavit Shokam Tarati, 
that the knower of the Atma crosses sorrow. So please teach me. So as any good teacher would, Sanat Kumara asks him, Okay, but please tell me what you already know. And Narada starts a long list and he mentions all of this. I know Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, Itihasa Purana, then Vedam, which is like grammar of the Vidyas. I know uh, Pitra Rashim, so all the rituals for Pitra's ancestors. I know about Daivam, Grace. I know Nidhim, Mineralogy. I know Vako Vakyam, that is logic. I know Ekayanam, Ethics. Deva Vidyam, in this particular context, means etymology. Brahma Vidyam, knowledge of the chanting and the chandas of the Vedas. Bhuta Vidya, knowledge of the Bhutas, uh, Panchamahabhutas. Kshatra Vidyam, knowledge of strategy, archery. And here I want you all to note, Nakshatra Vidya. So Narada says, I know astrology, astronomy. Sarpa Vidya, knowledge of, uh, you know, Sarpa and everything related to Sarpa snakes. Deva Janve, I also know fine arts like dancing and, uh, you know, the knowledge of perfume, sculpture, painting, etc. But yet, there is shoka, there is sorrow. So, this is very important. I know all these vidyas, but I still have sorrow because. I do not know the Atma. I may know the Atma Karaka, but I don't know that the Atma is the limitless. So Narada was sad because he recognized what the Gita says very clearly. Jata sehi dhruva omrityahu dhruvam janva mritasya cha tasmad aparihar yethe so for that which is born, death is certain. And for that which is dead, birth is certain. And for this, there is no parihara. There is no remedy for this condition called birth and death. And so therefore, Arjuna in the Gita, Krishna says, do not grieve over that which cannot be altered. So while there is Parihara in terms of Shani Shanti, Rahu Shanti, Pitra Dosha Shanti, Deva Kopa Shanti, Kula Deva Shanti, there are all these Pariharas of gemstones, Homas, Pujas, Tirtha Yatras, different kinds of karma. There is no Parihara, no remedy for death. And Narada, despite being a learned scholar, is not conditioned by his knowledge. He has the humility to go to someone who is wise and asks to be taught this. Because he recognizes that his knowledge, although it is of the Vedanga, it is still a Paravidya compared to Paravidya, that is the highest knowledge. So the knowledge of the self, that is the limitless. So Narada says, you know, I only know the words, but I don't know the Atma. And Sanat Kumara confirms and says, yes, what you have learned are words, Nama Matram. And then he gives him a list of Upasanas that can be done so that his mind becomes a lot more subtle so that he can appreciate the nature of the Atma. And uh, Shankaracharya, he gives an example here. So suppose the king is coming in a procession and you're very anxious to see him. But along with the king, there are thousands of people. There is pomp, there is grandeur, horses, elephants, vehicles. But where, where is the king? Hello. Oh, the king is there, but hidden from you. So with all the different types of knowledge that we enjoy, we learn, we are blessed with, Narada understands it is all Nama Matram. And so Sanat Kumara starts teaching him. He gives him almost 15 examples 
or rather one word leading to another where he says you know there is something greater than nama which is vak there is something greater than vak that is mind so so on he goes on you know there's a long list and then he finally says you know what is really important is satyam and further he says when one gets sukham uh, happiness then one does karma if you are not getting sukham happiness you are not going to do any karma and then narada further says i want that sukham and then sanat kumara reveals the great teaching of this chapter uh, in the chandogya upanishad he says yo vai bhuma tat sukham nalpe sukham asti yo vai bhuma tat sukham meaning that which indeed is the infinite that is bhuma ananda that is you to be discovered and the na alpi sukham asti there is no happiness in the finite bhuma eva sukham bhuma is a word for the infinite infinite alone is happiness bhuma eva vijiknyasitavya bhuma alone must be sought so narada says okay enough of fun and games i want the infinite i want this bhuma and so we do an inquiry into this so the, when the upanishad declares that na alpe sukham asti which means there is no happiness in the finite this is something to be dwelled upon let's say you love peanut butter let and let's say it's even organic okay then when you check the ingredients now we have gotten into that habit so we want to see how healthy it is and we feel good about eating healthy happiness is not mentioned as one of the ingredients you love your iphone 14 and then when you're looking at what it's made up of happiness is not mentioned as a primary part let's say you're on a dating app and even if the person's profile mentions i am a happy person who knows whether i will be happy with this person because i still have to go through the process of meeting the person so our everyday experience of happiness suggests that sukham happiness is not a part of something because if it was a part of something it would be giving me happiness all the time happiness sukham is not a property of someone because the same person who made me happy uh in a few years time uh may face me in the family court not necessary but possible <laughs> and sukham happiness is not a product of a process because if it was so i could just repeat the process again and again and then hey happiness sukham is really always available to us but yet although happiness sukham is not a part of something it is not a property of something sukham happiness is not a product of a process yet we all experience sukham in alpam in something limited whether the sukham is in dark chocolate or peanut butter or using my iphone or in being with a loved person and the upanishad does a fantastic analysis of sukham and says that in any moment of sukham happiness there is the person who is the seeker of happiness and the desired object the object of happiness so there is an interaction between i the subject and that which is other than i the object so the object may be vidya so especially for all of you gathered here jyotisham very sacred knowledge so any moment of insight clarity is something that delights you endlessly so it is vidyananda but when 
you are faced with a horoscope that uh, doesn't quite match what the person is saying and you uh, are not fully getting it you're not able to join the dots then there might be a frustration so the seeker of happiness the seeker of vidyananda is little far away from the vidya you know especially for all of us who are learning then we also have yoga ananda so when we are looking at ashtanga yoga so again the seeker of ananda seeking to know practice apply yoga all aspects of it in my life when there is fusion there is no separation there is a moment of happiness experientially or vishaya ananda you know ananda that is born of contact with an object which could be a, a thing or a person so what the upanishad does so beautifully is say in saying that in the moment of sukham happiness the ananda that you experience or the sukham you experience you think it belongs to the mind but actually it is your swarupa your nature that is being manifest the object just provides you with a desirable condition so just like the light of the full moon purnima it manifests on the moon but it does not belong to the moon so during moments of sukham happiness the infinite ananda that you are that is your swarupa swarupa means intrinsic nature that which can never change despite anything everything it's like how we say the swarupa of fire is to burn so anywhere in the world in any culture it will burn that's the nature of fire so your nature is sukham happiness and it does manifest in a finite mind but that happiness sukham which is a uh, limitless does not belong to the finite mind so this experience of oneness that we have in any sukham again whether you're listening to trance music or eating dark, dark chocolate or being with a loved one a loved one there is no sense of lack there is no more subject and object we are happy and so sanat kumara's teaching is really saying that that indeed is sukham that indeed is the limitless bhuma which is your nature and why you may be engaging in different kinds of experiences neither you the subject nor whatever you are interacting with exists apart from the limitless that is you because in the further analysis of happiness what we see is that the subject does not look upon the object as different there is a fusion that takes place between the one who loves and the what is loved and although the subject object remain but there is no separation so this notion that i am different from the other is causing disturbance in our experience of oneness for the time being in the moment of happiness we may attribute the quality of happiness on the wanted object so when i say uh, when you, when you tell me i love you three times a day then yeah, i feel very loved and i feel very happy if you don't you know that's my desired object let's say then i feel separation so what uh, sanat kumar is saying you know what in and through all your experiences what is always there is you and that is bhuma that is the limitless that is your intrinsic nature it is not to be found in the alpam in the limited so bhuma is the infinite which is you so then okay uh, okay i i got some new words today but you know what i i really want to prolong my experience of happiness and i try valiantly but i don't really succeed so the upanishad says but you know what na alpe sukham asti if you try to extract sukham happiness from the finite 
it's not going to happen. Why? Because every experience, uh, whether you're eating a chocolate, you're on vacation or this conference, it starts in time, it ends in time. And that same object does not give you happiness. If you don't believe me, try the 10th piece of dark chocolate. And further, whatever makes you happy, one becomes dependent on that object. And so if that object or that person doesn't behave the way I want, then I feel sad. So there is Dukkha Lesha, there is, um, there is a tinge of sadness that comes along with every experience of happiness. So the conclusion that I am finite and I am seeking the infinite or infinite, it's not correct. Why? So Upanishad says, you know what, the conclusion you've made in your life, you, you might want to check that. So who told you you are finite? You are Bhuma Brahman infinite. How did you conclude you are alpam, small and limited? Oh, because I'm associated with the body and mind. And you know, maximum I can just sit in one chair. I am not the limitless. But this is very much like the elephant who has been trained from childhood to think that I am limited. So I don't know if you all have been to Guru Valur. It's a very beautiful temple in Kerala. And very close to it is this beautiful elephant reserve. So when I visited there about 10 years ago, there were 65 elephants. Some of them are used in these temple processions. So of course, I was chatting with the trainers, the elephant mahouts. And I asked him, so how do you train the elephant? And uh, one of them said, you know, when the elephant is a baby, we tie her to a pole. And if she does the right thing, she is rewarded. Then if she does the wrong thing, she is poked. So in time, the elephant becomes dependent on us. And as we are elephant trainers. So then I asked the mahout, well, the elephant is definitely larger and stronger than you. How come she stays tied up? If she wants, she can really uproot the pole anytime. And the Mahmud said something very interesting. The elephant feels bound. Actually, she is free. The elephant has outgrown the chains a long time ago. And yes, you're right. If she wanted, she could just uproot the pole and she could just pick us up and thrash us, you know. But the elephant feels bound and that's how we can control that. So similar to the elephant, because of what we are associated with, which is a limited body and mind, and of course it's a very glorious instrument we have been given, but we feel bound by the body and mind and take it to be absolutely real. And so everything associated with body-mind, such as our identities, are very real. So just like the elephant has chains, which the elephant can break free from any time, our chains are our identities based on body and mind. So the identity as a karta, oh, I am a professional astrologer. I have to manage my reputation. I want more people to benefit. And uh, while I do fantastic readings, I don't have the time to uh, create awareness. I wish somebody else handled my social media, etc., etc. As a karta, as a doer, whichever profession one is in, one always feels limited. One always feels I can do more. Maybe I should have picked up Jyotish 20 years ago, maybe I shouldn't have made those mistakes, etc, etc. And then even the identity as an experiencer, a bhokta. So why am I going through such bad effects of Sade Sati? And why is this Parihara not working for me? Or how 
we have done all the pariharas for this particular person, but something is not working. So as an experiencer again, I might feel I am subject to karma phala as a doer. I feel whatever I do, karma is not enough. And so I try to manipulate my karma, you know, to obtain sukha, much like Narada did, but it doesn't help. So the truth of both the karta and the bhokta, the doer and the experience, or whichever role you are playing, this primary twofold role, doer, experience, uh, associated with body, mind, we take it as real. And alpam sukham nas nasti. <laughs> so in that which is limited, sukham is not there. And so therefore, what shall we do? Oh, well, who is the one that is aware of limitation? You. So bhuma eva sukham, the infinite, that is you, the one who is aware of your profession, the one who drops the professional role when one goes to deep sleep really means that if you can drop something, it's not you. What is not always present is not you. Then who are you? Oh, I, I'm this so-and-so name. I live here, whatever geographical coordinates. And then we can say astrological coordinates. Okay, what? who is the one aware of all this? I am. Which chart did you need to read to say, I am nothing? Everything is known because I am. I am means self-evident. Everything else becomes known to me. I am and therefore I can know any subject matter. So that because of which I am aware of something, but itself is not an object of awareness, that I am. We have a word consciousness, bhuma, limitless. So just like chair is, table is, you know, phone is. Chair, table, phone, different forms, they keep getting displaced. What is it that does not get displaced? Isness. Where did that isness come from? It's you. Isness, that is you always is in three periods of time trikale api tishthati satyam and that is bhuma that is who you really are and so as bhuma as the limitless uh, irrespective of what you are doing and what you are experiencing you as bhuma as the infinite are not a part of anything you are not a property of anything nor are you a product of a process because parts, properties, processes are subject to coming and going. And you as Bhuma, as a limitless, you are independent of the body and mind. You are conscious of it. It is not conscious of you. It is inert. Jadam. Okay? You know, they would have studied Pancha Mahabhutas, etc. So, with respect to something, I am aware of or I am conscious of that object, including my thoughts and so on. With respect to myself, what am I? Bhuma, limitless. And this Bhuma has no boundaries. It is Ananta. So as Bhuma, as Sukham, as happiness, it, we are not talking about a fleeting emotion. We're talking about that which is not a state, which is not an experience because these are come and go. It is you. It is not limited. You, you are not limited by the boundaries of your mind or the boundaries of your thought. So you are Sukha, you are infinite and this extends beyond the form just like the wave in the ocean continues to be water. It may be a big wave, small wave, whatever wave, but all names, all forms occur in water and likewise it continues to be water. So you happen to have a form in this lifetime and then you play around with your karma, karma phala through your chat, etc. But all those are just forms that appear in the consciousness that you are. And this Bhuma that is the limit, limitless continues to exist even when thoughts come in the mind and thoughts end. 
so sometimes there will be happy thoughts sometimes there may not be such happy thoughts that's okay but you as guma the infinite illumine every thought because you're always present and what is very important is no thought is opposed to who you really are and this guma that is the infinite that is you is independent of all forms so all other forms are dependent on you so very much like the dog and the bone you know the dog is chewing on a dry bone and uh, after chewing 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 suddenly uh, there is blood so the dog is thrilled saying oh now i taste blood and uh, he says oh wow finally i was able to extract this blood from the bone but actually <laughs> the blood comes from the dog <laughs> okay he is bleeding gums so we attribute so come to different experiences objects but actually just like the bone invoked the blood from the dog <laughs> experiences our so called ha happy experiences they invoke the ananda that one is and there is only one source of ananda that is bhuma that is you and if indeed atma has to be sukham then it has to be true in every time every place now and forever sukham cannot be related to my body or mind or my senses because that's conditional and nothing can inhibit that sukham so this sukham that uh, sanat kumara teaches narada is not something that can be created or generated it cannot be set up by your will or your actions that sukham is you you are the infinite it is centered on you it is your swarupa it is unchanging and you are not limited the atma the limitless that you are is not alpam it's not small and just your love for sukham your love for happiness uh, reveals that you always want to return to your nature which is sukham so in any culture we can uh, congratulate people happy anniversary happy birthday happy work day happy weekend etc and nobody turns around and says you know what i actually don't want happiness i've had enough thank you very much no one says that why because we seek that which feels natural to us we want to return again and again to our nature and that is sukham that is you the infinite ananda and so my prayers that uh, all of you all at some point in time um consider this brahma vidya the knowledge of the reality that is you and may the rishis and devatas continue to bless you om tat sat wow mesmerizing swamini ji very very much appreciate um, these wisdom uh, coming from you and um, yeah i was looking up <laughs> the words and chandok as you do well as i do actually <laughs> so you know but absolutely beautiful um i think we all probably need this you know this wisdom and this sense of balance um because i think we get so caught up as you said in uh, pursuing this and that and the you know which is all finite ultimately you know So yeah thank you very very much um anyone any questions you feel free to unmute yourself because so far we were taking questions where we were just uh, uh you know yeah nobody i'm shocked nobody wants to say I, anything i I've, be... i've seen four questions on the chat box and i don't know oh have you oh them. lovely fabulous uh wow this is vijay kumar ji i i think you may have to join and roll into swamini ji's course because i'm not sure which is up will you please give guidance on 
pancha prana and its influence on the prana and the mind where are the karma stored in us is it related to our souls and consciousness oh my god what are the various types of consciousness and their role in life well swamini ji i leave up to you if you are in a mood how are we for time we are fine you know i have no but i realize that it is um us getting on late in india um you know so it's up to you if you feel like answering uh, we would love it you know okay. i'm i'm happy to answer i will try okay. to not give very elaborate answers but enough yeah. to satiate the questioner okay at least that's my hope okay so uh, pancha prana um so we uh, look at prana apana vyana udana samana you know so uh, each of these pranas are responsible for the different processes of respiration evacuation digestion circulation and assimilation and uh, prana I, i'm guessing you all have some familiarity with sukshma sharira okay what is referred to as a subtle body which has yes. 17 yes. factors yes. so you all are familiar yes. then since prana is very much uh, so pancha prana is a part of the sukshma sharira and therefore by mastering one you affect the rest of the sukshma sharira so that's why uh you do a little pranayama and you find the ahankara manas chittam a uh, buddhi lot more clearer lot more karma because of this prana and mind connection okay and i using the word, word mind loosely so um the guidance i would like to give on this is just that you know please do whatever pranayamas that one has learned and that contributes to mastery of the mind okay second question where are the karmas stored in us so again uh atma the definition of atma the limitless is other than uh sthula sharira sukshma sharira and karana sharira now i don't know if you're familiar with this okay so atma is other than the gross physical body other than the subtle body and other than the karana sharira okay karana sharira is the causal body and causal body which is avidya krita which is made up of as though undifferentiated avidya that's where the karmas are stored karmas as it you know all karma kama is born of avidya not knowing who i really am and therefore the cycle of manana maranam janam etc you know the cycle of birth and death keeps going on so karma is stored you know the seed is avidya and that is a part of karana sharira the causal body is it related to our soul i have no idea what the word soul means we have atma atma is not a translatable it cannot be saved because it is already free and uh, so the jiva the, the individual who has who is atma doesn't know and therefore in the karana sharira that is a causal body avidya karmas are stored okay then uh, question 3 what are the various types of consciousness there is only one and that is you uh i think you mean something else by the word consciousness you might mean three different uh states of experience that, that is a waking state the dream state and the deep sleep state uh and so i atma is avastha traya is present in and through all the three states and each state is exclusive to the other so uh they they help us understand that the waker is not a part of the dream state and so you can drop the waker when you are in a dream or in deep sleep which really means that uh, what is not always present is not you so we do an analysis of the three states of experience to come to the consciousness that is you that is the limitless fourth how can a person get opened up to infinite knowledge and awareness uh, seek a guru find somebody you can resonate with and learn systematically then uh, 
the guru will only uh, take away the obstacles that uh, stand in the path because you are already consciousness so you don't have to do anything as such but one has to prepare oneself to have a very subtle and mastered mind so that when the words of the shastra are being revealed then you say yeah yeah that's true yeah yeah for sure you know the shastra is talking about me so all the best for all your pursuits wow that was absolutely amazing thank you all very very much and uh, namaskaram swamini ji